Hello everyone, my name is Martin Rules. Today is Thursday, which means it's Philippine True Crime Stories. Kamusta kayong lahat? I hope you guys are safe and healthy. If you're new here, hi, my name is Martin. I make videos every Thursday ng true crime story na nangyari sa Pilipinas while I do my makeup. So if you're interested sa mystery, crime, and makeup, I suggest you hit that subscribe button and join the true crime family. Also, don't forget to click that bell button para ma-update kayo pag meron tayong bagong uploads. And kung meron kayong question about sa episode natin today and sa makeup na ina-apply ko, don't hesitate to DM me on Instagram and sasagutin ko lahat ng questions niyo. Last week, we talked about the shocking murder case of Mida Blanca and today, we are going to talk about another murder case, the Actually, itong topic na to or episode na to is very fitting nung last week's episode kasi last month is Pride Month kaso mas nauna kong na-research yung kay Nida Blanca and then napanghinaan ako ng loob na ipagpatuloy to oo oh, oh. pero sabi ko dead ma dahil everyday is pride and everyday is a celebration of our individuality so pag-uusapan natin to today and ang ating topic is Jennifer Laudes murder case and kung bakit imperialismo ang nasa likod ng kanyang pagkamatay I think it's rude for me if I'm not going to discuss Soji and Pride on this episode and I believe then na we have to take the space and use our platforms to educate other people, di ba? So, himahimayin natin tong Soji or sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression. And lahat tayo meron ito. And gusto ko lang i-clear na hindi lang yung mga nasa LGBTQIA plus community ang meron ito. As in lahat tayo, SO muna tayo or sexual orientation. Ang sexual orientation, ito is kung saan ka sexually attracted or saan ka nalilibugan in Tagalog. So we have heterosexual or straight, sila yung na-attract sa opposite gender. Um, for example, ako ay male, na-attract ako sa female. And kung ako naman ay female, na-attract ako sa male. Next is bisexual or often referred as bi. Sila naman ay na-attract sa both genders. Babae, lalaki, carry bells. Next is pansexual or sometimes called as omnisexual. Sila naman ay attracted to all gender and mas inclusive sila compared sa bisexual kasi nga lahat ng gender. And lastly, we have homosexual. Sila ay attracted sa same gender. For example, ako lalaki, um, attracted ako sa kapwa ko lalaki. And kapag babae ako, attracted ako sa kapwa ko babae. Okay, let's move on and magtungo naman tayo sa GI or gender identity. This one is how you identify yourself regardless sa uh, given or assigned sex at birth. May assumption kasi na yung ating assigned sex and gender identity ay iisa. For example, kapag pinanganak kang lalaki, you are expected to be tough. And kapag pinanganak ka namang babae, you are expected to be gentle. Again, napaka-heteronormative ng thinking na to, ano? And it has to be abolished dahil ang gender identity ay more complex than that. So some of the types of gender identity are transgender, cisgender, gender fluid, and more. Lastly, E, expression or gender expression. Ito naman is how you express yourself um, kung paano ka manamit, kung paano ka magsalita, kung paano ka gumalaw o kumilos. And to marry these three, kailangan mo lang isipin ay ganito. So unang-una, isipin nyo si sexual orientation, siya yung container. And pangalawa, si gender identity, siya yung laman or content ng container. And then pangatlo, si gender expression, siya yung decoration ng container. So you have eleganza, extravaganza kind of container. Yes! Actually, mas malawak pa yung sa clown Soji, pero for now, yun muna yung i-discuss natin. And let's move on and have a quick discussion about Pride naman. So this year marks the 50th anniversary of Pride Month or Pride March na annually celebrate ng LGBTQIA plus community. By the way, yung initials, ang meaning ng initials ng LGBTQIA ay lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, and asexual. And yung plus, 
is marami pa siyang sakop dahil napakalawak talaga. Anyway, yung first Pride March nangyari sa New York noong June 28, 1970, one year after nangyari yung riot sa Stonewall. Kasi same day before that year, June 28, 1969, nagkaroon ng uprising between the police and the LGBTQ plus community. Well, at that time, hindi pa coined yung term na LGBTQ until 1988 nung ginamit ng isang activist yung initials. So, yung mga gay icons talaga na nag-push ng visibility ng community and nag-start ng riot sa Stonewall ay sila Stormy De La Verie, Marsha P. Johnson, and Sylvia Rivera. Dahil nung panahon na yun, ang pagiging lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender ay illegal and pagiging kasalanan. That's why my community started the peaceful protest para sa equal rights dahil sobra talaga yung discrimination and it often result of my people getting killed because of hate and 50 years na yung nakalipas still we are being demonized and treated as a laughing stock and treated na parang sakit sa society and personally I think to combat these homophobic traits na talagang embedded na sa history natin against the LGBTQ community ay dapat ituro ito sa school kasi I believe people fear what they don't know or what they don't understand kaya importante na ituro sa mga future generations yung soji at yung struggles ng LGBTQIA plus community para ma-erase yung hatred. And ang message ko lang sa younger and future LGBTQIA plus, wrap yourself with knowledge dahil ito lang yung panlaban natin sa mga homophobic, transphobic, racist, and bigots na individuals. I love you, be who you are, and laban lang tayo. Okay, before we start, the topic that I will mention might trigger your anxiety or depression. And warning na rin sa um, description ng story na to at sa mga images are disturbing. So, I advise for your discretion. Yung story nga natin today is about Jennifer Laude, a 26 years old Filipina trans woman na born in Leyte pero moved to Olongapo City para makipag sa palaran. So, yung mom niya, si Jolita Laude, describe Jennifer as ganda kasi ito yung laging binabanggit ni Jennifer sa sarili niya nung bata siya na maganda siya. So, ayun na yung naging palayo niya. Sabi pa nung nanay ni Jennifer, nagtatrabaho daw si Jennifer sa salon and pinaglalapa daw ni Jennifer yung may-ari ng salon para makakuha ng free food. And also, nagpapadala daw ito sa pamilya linggo-linggo. Promise niya pa sa nanay niya na kapag umuwi siya sa kanila, hindi na daw siya pagtatawanan na bakla dahil meron daw siyang narating. Si Jennifer meron siyang fiancé na si Mark Susel Beck, isang German. And noong October 1, 2014, nakaredy na yung um, visa ni Jennifer and yung kanyang wedding dress dahil supposedly, Uh, magpapakasal sila ng kanyang fiancé sa Germany. Pero hindi natuloy yung mga pangarap ni Jennifer noong October 11, that same year, when she was brutally murdered. Ganito kasi yung nangyari. So, ayon sa mga witnesses, si Jennifer Laude at saka si Joseph Pemberton nag-meet daw sa Ambience Disco Bar noong mga 10 p.m. By the way, si Lance Corporal Joseph Scott Pemberton was 19 years old at that time and member siya ng Marine Corps 2nd Battalion, 9th Marine of the West Pacific Express. And then after a while, nag-check-in sila sa cell zone lodge ng mga about 11.05 p.m. and assigned sila sa room number 1 by Elias, yung um, bellboy and cashier ng motel. Si Jennifer sinadjust niya na 5K yung bayad for the service pero si Pemberton, 1K lang yung gustong ibayad. Pumayag na lang si Jennifer dahil natatakot siya na baka madiscover na siya ay isang transgender. After 30 minutes, lumabas si Pemberton dun sa room number 1, leaving the door slightly ajar. Akala ni Elia susunod si Jennifer, pero 15 minutes na yung nakalipas, walang Jennifer na lumabas. Side note, Whether or not Jennifer Laude is a sex worker, I must say there's nothing wrong with that because sex work is work, period. And si Jennifer lang yung makakapagpatunay nito. So going back, nung pumasok si Elias dun sa room number one, kung saan niya inassign si Jennifer and si Pemberton, <laughs> na-discover niya yung dead, naked body ni Jennifer na wrapped in bed sheet and 
nakasubmerge yung ulo sa toilet bowl. I'm showing you the photo kasi gusto kong i-instill sa mga utak nyo, lalo na sa mga homophobics, na ito yung nadudulot ng hate. Ayon sa Medical Legal, it shows that si Jennifer died from aspicia due to strangulation and drowning. Meanwhile, nung bumalik si Pemberton sa Navy ship nila, um, kinuusap niya yung friend niya about sa nangyari. And ang sabi niya, galit daw siya because it had a dick. Wow. It? The level of disrespect. Then he choked it from behind and ang sabi niya pa, and I quote, I think I killed a he, she. End quote. Another side note, why would you kill someone just because they're different? The fuck? People fear what they don't understand talaga, no? And ano naman kung hindi niya dinisclose yung gender niya? Ibig sabihin ba nun, papatayin mo na siya agad? Girl. Also, may nakita ako mga comments noon na saying Jennifer Laude deserves it kasi um, bakla siya and lalaki siya, pumapatol siya sa kapwa ni lalaki. F*** you. Nakakadiri kayo dahil you are siding with the oppressor. You have to understand na maraming transgender people na nagbibenta ng laman dahil walang tumatanggap sa kanila ng trabaho. Or kung meron man, binabato naman sila ng sobrang daming diskriminasyon. And again, it all boils down dahil hindi ginagawa ng gobyerno ang trabaho nila. Hindi nila pinoprotektahan ng mga transgender or other minorities. And imbes na kung ano-ano yung mga batas na pinagpapapasan nyo, ipasan nyo yung SOGI Equality Bill. Pota kayo. Napatalak na naman ang atin nyo. Diyos ko, ito na nga. So, going back, yung Kamasutra condom wrapper na nasamsam dun sa may bathroom kung saan nakita yung katawan ni Jennifer Laude, um, napunta ito sa mga kamay ng NCIS or American authorities, pero hindi ng authorities natin. Mm-mm. However, napatunayan na isa dun sa mga tatlong condom wrappers na nakita, merong fingerprints ni Pemberton and ito ay based sa US Army Criminal Investigations. And since um, American nga yung gumawa ng krimen, papasok dito yung BFA or Visiting Forces Agreement. And isa sa mga agreement na kasaad doon na it allows US government to retain jurisdiction over the U.S. military personnel accused of committing crimes in the Philippines. Meaning, sila yung bahalang humatol sa sarili nilang citizen. Kahit na nakapag um, gumawa ito ng krimen sa Pilipinas. Pero unless the crime are particular important in the Philippines under BFA, the local court have one year to complete any legal proceedings. Hi, I'm from the future. So, discuss lang natin yung imperialism dahil I think and I believe meron itong malaking um, relationship or kinalaman sa death ni Jennifer Laude. So, mabilisan lang yung imperialism, nag-ugat pa to sa napakatagal at napakalalim na kasaysayan. And ang ideology ng imperialism ay ang pag-expand ng kapangyarihan ng isang power country to rule over some other foreign nations. Now you might think that isn't that colonialism? Etong dalawang to works hand in hand together dahil ang colonialism ay ang pag-set up ng isang colonial country which is America ng kanilang political and economic system sa bansa kung saan sila magsettle which is the Philippines. Just think of it as colonialism as a practice and imperialism is the idea driving the practice. Ginawa ito ng mga Westerners dahil, of course, para mag-benefit ang kanilang mother country. Dahil kapag marami ka nasasakupan and yung bansang sinakop mo works for you, you'll be rich and powerful country. And babalik tayo sa Philippine history natin no, when the Americans colonized us. Kasi yung educational system that they introduced had to correspond to the political and economic of American conquest. Meaning, nang mamass produce tayo ng mga tao to work for them. Um, unang-unang example na lang is mga nurses. They teach us their ways as if they are our masters, shaping our culture by poisoning our ideologies. And mapapaisip ka rin talaga no, 
kung independent country na ba talaga tayo. And then papasok dito yung Philippine-American friendship or relationship dahil may presence ng American Navy ship dun sa may subic. And that's why Jennifer meets her demise dahil dito sa American imperialism dito sa bansang Pilipinas. Ilang months na yung nakalipas since the death of Jennifer Laude. Actually, parang next year na. And March 16, 2015 to be exact. Saka lang nag-start yung murder trial. Sa sobrang tagal ng trial, um, some of the LGBT community and activist group nag-protest sila para mapabilis yung trial and makuha na nung pamilya Laude yung katarungan na kailangan nila. Speaking of Laude's family, uh, may reports na dininay daw nila yung settlement. Ayon sa deal, makaka-receive daw sila ng 38 million pesos and 6 US visas kapag drinap daw nila yung case laban kay Pemberton. Pero nung kinuha ng press yung side nila and ang sabi ng kampo naman ng Laudes, dinay-deny nila yung allegation na ito kasi they will never drop the case for any amount of money. Seven months later, so December 1, um, 2015, para maging eksakta tayo, sa Olongapo Regional Trial Court, inintay yung paghahatol. Laudes attorneys Virgie Suarez and Harry Roque took the case pro bono and ang sabi nila, si attorney Suarez muna and I quote, they expect no less than conviction for Pemberton. Yun lang ang paraan para makamit ng pamilya Laude ang katarungan. End quote. Then si attorney Harry Roque naman, whatever happened to him? And ang sabi niya, and I quote, we are an independent country, therefore, he should be detained in a Philippine jail, end quote. Since yung accused admits the infliction of the injury and yung mga evidence na katuro sa kanya, the court finds Lance Corporal Joseph Scott Pemberton guilty beyond reasonable doubt for the crime of homicide and sentencing him to suffer the indeterminate sentence of 6 years of prison correctional as minimum and 12 years of prison mayor as maximum. The court also emphasized na dapat yung confinement and detention ni Pemberton ay dito sa Pilipinas. He is considered a national prisoner so dapat sa New Bilibid siya makulong pero nalokha ko dahil one hour after nung trial yung kampo ni Pemberton at si Pemberton hindi sila umalis ng korte actually nagkaroon pa ng standoff dahil after iutos ng korte na dalhin na si Pemberton sa New Bilibid prison yung mga Amerikanong member ng Regional Pacific Command NCIS at mga um, US Embassy ay nakapalibot kay Pemberton. Hindi siya pinapakawalan or hindi siya binibigay sa mga authorities natin. And naglast yun for 3 hours. Diyos ko. So imagine niyo na lang, si Pemberton nasa gitna siya. And then yung mga Amerikano, um, first layer ng circle kasi nga pinapalibutan siya. Hindi siya binibigay sa authorities natin. Eh. And then yung third layer, yung mga kapulisan natin. Kaya yung judge tuloy rules to delay Pemberton's imprisonment until further notice. The Department of Justice naman said na dapat dalhin si Pemberton sa Camp Aguinaldo. Si Attorney Suarez, yung isa sa um, attorney ng mga laudes, ang sabi niya, and I quote, The fact that they still refuse to surrender Pemberton to our authorities is a total disrespect towards the entire Filipino people, our judiciary, and legal system. End quote. This only means that we are being treated as second-class citizens sa sarili nating bansa. And katulad nga nung sinabi ni Attorney Suarez, hindi lang yung legal process and sovereignty yung tinatapakan or yunuyurakan ng mga mananakap na to pati tayong mga Pilipino. And I'm convinced na Jennifer Laude's death is a result of continued imperialism of America sa Pilipinas. So, nadetain nga si Pemberton sa Camp Aguinaldo and nakikita nyo yung white privilege no? dahil imbes na murder yung kaso sa kanya, naging um, homicide. And imbes na sa Bilibid siya madetain, dun siya nilagay sa may Camp Aguinaldo. Now, all of this happened during the Bald Pinoy's administration. Uh -uh. Pero come 2016, the Davao City Mayor turned President Rodrigo Duterte said on one of his press con, and I quote, America, prepare for the eventual repeal for the abrogation of the Visiting Forces Agreement. End quote. And two years after ng death ni Jennifer Laude, um, meron na namang pumuntang Amerikano o kay Nanay Hulita Laude and nag-offer na naman ito ng 
settlement of agreement na kapag pinirmahan ni Nanay Julita, makakakuha siya ng 4.6 million pesos, if I'm not mistaken. And of course, mapapalaya si Pemberton and makikita mo talaga no, kung paano gamitin ng US government yung poverty para sila yung maging winner at the end. I guess, hindi tinanggap ni Nanay Julita yung offer dahil dagdag pa niya. Pumunta sila ni um, Roque kay Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte para humingi ng tulong financial. As a true clown himself, after badmouthing America, Duterte nakipagplastikan at nakipagkamayan kay Trump nung ASEAN. Also, since ang mahalin ay ikaw serenading the US visitors. How ironic. Fast forward to this year, February 11, 2020 to be exact, Duterte terminates BFA or Visiting Forces Agreement. And ang funny dahil ang nag-trigger nito ay si Bato, former PNP chief, aka crying senator, aka architect of Duterte's bloody war on drugs campaign, aka sana ganito na lang lagi dahil sa kanyang cancellation ng visa. Duterte said and I quote, I'm warning you, pag hindi nyo ginawa ang correction dyan, I will terminate the basis of BFA. End quote. Today, I believe si Pemberton andun pa rin sa kanyang golden cage, aka andun sa may Camp Aguinaldo, kung saan may sariling kusina at sariling aircon. Pero ngayong na-terminate na yung BFA, Lauda's Family Legal Counsel Attorney Harry Roque said, and I quote, The BFA has finally been terminated. I hope that he will be finally moved to Muntinlupa, where he belongs together with the Ampatuan and other killers, end quote. Until now, walang new reports kung na-transfer na ba si Pemberton sa New Believe It. And it prolongs the agony of the victim's family because the accused gets special treatment under the U.S. Um, custody doon sa may Camp Aguinaldo. The Court of Appeals upholds 10-year jail time kay Pemberton and he owes the Laude family of 4.32 million pesos for the civil indemnity and moral exemplary damages. So that's it my friends, the sad story of Jennifer Laude and the story of American imperialism and neo-colony country like the Philippines. I hope meron kayo natutunan just like I do and ang daming injustices na nangyari sa Pilipinas and uhaw na uhaw yung bansa natin sa hustisya. Kaya hindi tayo dapat manahimik and lahat tayo dapat magsalita at isiwalat kung ano ang totoo. Let me know your thoughts, conspiracy, or mga theories sa comment section below and kung meron kayong questions sa makeup na ginawa ko today and sa episode nga natin today, don't hesitate to DM me on Instagram and sasagutin kayo mga questions nyo. Before I go, gusto ko lang sabihin na please make good choices in life, stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you guys next Thursday. Bye!